The Red Queen, Theory of Everything. Created and narrated by me, Sean Johnston, author of Rethinking What It Means We Evolved and publisher of EvolutionForTheHumanities.com. Which figure in literature can speak to us today? I say, from Alice in Wonderland, it's the Red Queen. She could put into words what we all feel today. Here we must run as fast as we can, she said, just to stay in place. And if you want to go anywhere, you must run twice as fast as that. What made the Red Queen so wise? Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast, she said. Maybe if we all had six impossible things to believe, we could also become as wise as the Red Queen. I've just picked up this packet of six impossible things. Let's see if it would work for us as it worked for her. Impossible thing number one. Each of us knows, better than science does, what really matters. What really matters? Our children? What can we learn from them? Remember Alice, such a sweet girl, so full of life. Let's suppose she's being beamed from our colony on Mars back to the Earth. Ah, there she is now. But she's not going to look quite the same. A transporter is purely a piece of human engineering, so it's limited to purely physical processes. So only what was purely physical about Alice could be transported back. Everything she thinks and does now must be determined by the laws of physics. All her decisions must be arrived at and carried out by her purely physical brain. Any sense she has that she can arrive at her decisions and carry them out consciously, that she can be creative, that she has free will, all these must be illusions. She's as purely physical as a pebble or a lump of plastic. As Alice goes to join the others already beamed back through the transporter, I turn to one of the engineers who built it. Poor Alice, I said, beamed back through purely physical processes means she's purely physical. No more free will, no more creativity. No need to feel sorry for her, he said. She's just the same as you and me. We're all purely physical. We're all as determined by physics as anything else in the universe. Any sense you have that you have free will or can be creative, that's just an illusion as it is for her. Must we give science the last word in what really matters? I don't feel so. I'm aware of being conscious, and consciousness is not purely physical, so I'm not purely physical either. To do what I'm doing now, talking to you, I have to be able to arrive at conclusions and decisions consciously, and consciously direct my body to carry them out, to express my thoughts. Most of what I do, I do for the sake of conscious experiences, like going to the fridge for the sensation of eating ice cream. My body does not need ice cream. It's my consciousness that needs it. And creativity? I can be creative whenever I want. Like this. And this. Is physics more real? No, actually, it's not. For physics to exist or be created, it has to be part of someone else's conscious experiences. So isn't that making consciousness more real? And isn't it consciousness of physics and everything else that makes life worth living? Doesn't that make consciousness what really matters? So that's idea number one. From actually being conscious, each of us knows better than science does, what really matters. Impossible thing number two, evolution could involve processes that aren't purely physical. Evolution. Let's think about us having evolved. That's like being beamed up from one time to another. My engineer friend will tell us that evolution too involves only purely physical processes, so we must be purely physical too, and everything about us must be determined by the laws of physics. Any sense we have that we can make our decisions consciously or be creative is an illusion. 
But in this instance, the transporter evolution is not a piece of human engineering. So science may not be such a helpful guide. After all, the methods of science apply only to what's purely physical. They can't tell us about anything else, even if there is anything else. So I think my engineer friend is wrong. I know I am conscious, and consciousness isn't purely physical, so I'm not purely physical either. And I am a product of evolution, so surely evolution needn't be purely physical either. So that's impossible thing number two. No matter what science says, the processes driving evolution may not be purely physical. Impossible thing number three. What drives evolution is the genome being conscious and creative. The genome. The genome is all the genes in the nucleus of each living cell that tell a creature how to grow and reproduce itself. What drives evolution? What could it be? According to science, each living creature dies, and the only constant throughout evolution has been the physical environment, and is having to adapt to the physical environment that makes creatures evolve. Is that true? What else could there be besides the physical environment that's existed ever since life began, and that you find wherever you find life? How about that genome? Living, individual living creatures may die, but the genome doesn't. It gets copied from generation to generation. And everywhere you find life, you'll find the genome. So the genome's been around long enough to drive evolution. And as living creatures have evolved to become more complicated, the genomes evolved to become longer and correspondingly more complex too. A complex. In us, the genome consists of a few dozen long molecules. If you join them together, they'd stretch for six foot. It consists from end to end of code written out in small molecular subunits of four different kinds, like an alphabet of four different letters. Now, turn those four different letters into small beads of four different colors, and imagine them strung eight beads to an inch to make a necklace. That's a pretty tightly strung necklace, a hundred beads to a foot, half a million to a mile. Then, the three billion units of code in our genome, as such a necklace, would stretch for 6,000 miles. That's a distance from New York to Tokyo, Japan, 13 hours travel time by air. That's a colossal amount of information. Yet it comes crammed so tightly into the cell nucleus that 8,000 of them would fit into a cube the width of a human hair. Yet despite being crammed so tightly for that code to be read, to make a protein, for example, sections of those molecules have to be brought together in precise alignment. And this is happening all the time in great torrents of activity. It's imaginably, unimaginably precise and complex. That's vastly more complex than anything else we know of in the universe, except for a brain like ours. Could the genome be such a brain? Is that why it's been evolving so long and becoming so complicated? It doesn't hold as much information as our brains, but it's been evolving for a hundred times as long. So it's hard to limit what it could be capable of. Think of it as a brain like ours, and it too could be conscious and creative, just as we experience ourselves being conscious and creative. After all, it makes such, and each of us becomes conscious automatically, is something the genome's built into us. If it can make brains like ours that support consciousness, then perhaps we have to accept that it too could be conscious and creative. So that's impossible thing number three. What drives evolution is the genome being conscious and creative. 
Impossible thing number four. The genome makes new species evolve by rethinking their genes. What happens when the genome thinks? Well, what happens in us when we think? We make changes to brain chemistry. For example, to remember something, we make changes to brain cells responsible for memory. If the genome can do that, then when it thinks, it's going to make changes to its brain. But its brain consists of the genes strung along the genome. So just by thinking, the genome can make changes to a species' genes. But that's what defines a species. It's genes. So just by recalling a species' genes, as we recall memories, rethinking them, the genome can change one species into another. That seems really impossible. But it's only as impossible as our thinking, our conscious thoughts, writing themselves into brain chemistry so we remember something. And we know that happens. So, impossible things number four. The genome makes new species evolve by rethinking their genes. Impossible thing number five. To make us able to think, the genome built into us the process of thoughts evolving. Impossible thing number four told us that for the genome, thinking and evolving are the same thing. So for the genome, to make us able to think, all it would have to do would be to build into us the process of evolution as something evolving. Our thoughts. Then in us, thinking would be one thought evolving into another. And as that happens, I suppose they could generate our experience of consciousness. Where else could it come from? So, impossible thing number five, to make us able to think, the genome built into us, the process of thoughts evolving, our thoughts evolving, we experience as consciousness. Impossible thing number six, everything in the world can be accounted for in terms of physical forces operating on matter and thoughts operating in mind. We now know of two kinds of processes going on in the world. One is physical processes acting on matter. The other is something evolving, either thoughts evolving in the minds of living creatures or species of living creatures themselves evolving in the mind of the genome. Physics and evolution. They seem so different, but maybe they're just channels giving us access to two different aspects of the same reality. That's impossible thing number six. Everything in the world can be accounted for in terms of combinations of physical forces acting on matter and thoughts evolving in mind. That's all there is. I hope you agree this theory is very impossible. I think the Red Queen would approve. I'm going to name it after her, the Red Queen Theory of Everything. So there it is. Has the Red Queen helped us become a little wiser? This video is a promotion for the book Rethinking What It Means We Evolved, where these six impossible things are explained in greater detail. That book is part of a program encouraging the application of humanities-style thinking to evolution. For more information on that program, visit the websites evolutionforthehumanities.com and evolveself.com. Links to them are provided in the description below.